What's up guys? Welcome back to the Home Slice. Today we are out doing the outdoors test on the Topps Silent Hero. Now, Topps is a cool company and one of the reasons that they're a cool company is that they're one of the few companies that still does a real differential heat treatment. If you're not familiar with what that means, it means the spine of the knife is hardened differently than the cutting edge of the knife. And this is a technology that originated maybe back in Japan. They used to do it, if you see a Hamon line, like the wavy line that's on a samurai sword, that's actually from uh, the fact that they've tempered the spine of the katana to a softer and more durable hardness than they've tempered the actual cutting edge to. They've kept the cutting edge harder, actually. Now, will that translate to this being able to cut a tomato and a piece of paper after more hours of chopping? I don't really know, but I think it's a really cool and unique feature that you get when you buy a Topps knife. If you want to know more about Topps knives and the reason that I know that they do that process of actually having different hardnesses on the quench of the blade, I'll try to throw a link to a video up above my head here and you can actually see their, a bit of their factory tour. What I anticipate is I think the grip on this handle is going to be really good. I've actually brought leather gloves today. My K-Bar Becker, it was a little bit slippery, but because of the shape of it, it I wouldn't have to reset too often, but I did notice that the nylon was a bit slippery with leather gloves. So I've been having to rotate back and forth between leather and these nitrile coated gloves. And I think the, let's see, the uh, SE6, the leather was a bit too slippery because the shape of the handle didn't have as much flair to it to keep it in my hand. But this handle actually has some really, really heavy texturing to it and it's that grippy micarta material. So what I'm hoping is that I can actually use leather gloves with this. Obviously when you're dealing with blackberry vines and gorse and really thorny, nasty bushes that you sometimes have to grab to cut them properly, you want to be able to wear leather gloves, but for that to happen and for you to be swinging and impacting sometimes large stems or trunks and the shock of that, for the knife to stay in a good grip position in your hand, you actually need to have quite good either texture or shape or material to generate that grip so that you can wear leather gloves that are sort of impervious to thorns more, but still not lose the knife from the grip position in your hand. So that's enough chat for today. Uh, we'll get to some video, but thanks for tuning in. So based on some of the feedback I've gotten, I'm gonna split this video into two sort of sections. There'll be some sort of first person shooter perspective uh, footage with overlaid commentary, and then there'll be some fun slow-mo at the end. This is what the Top Silent Hero looks like. It's got a very comfortable forward grip. The grip in the back for chopping is also quite nice if you have gloves on. It's a bit aggressive if you don't. That darkened line you see there is where the hardness changes. You can see I've got the paracord tied around my leg, and that actually pushes the sheath forward along my belt. And throughout the day that was a mild annoyance, but this is really the worst part, is that the part that's supposed to be retaining the knife into the sheath, the edge sort of presents itself at an angle where it wants to cut into that, which was a bit stressful. Eventually I just took that little tab and folded it inside the portion of the sheath that's holding it on my belt so that I could slip it in and out. But yeah. then there was really nothing holding it in, which is a little bit inconvenient if you're getting it in and out quite a lot. It's blasting through some berry vines here. These are real easy to cut, but it had no problem getting up the speed and angle to cut those in one quick stroke. So I was very pleased with that. Here we have some sped up video of me cutting through an invasive species they call Chinese lantern here. It's kind of like real small green bamboo, not quite as tough as bamboo, but it is decently difficult to cut. So this this portion of the video really demonstrates the chopping power that you get in the Top Silent Hero for such a small knife. And this is really where I began to sort of fall in love with the knife a bit because so many of them in just one or two strokes, I would be through these sizable stems. And that's really rare for a knife of these dimensions. 
I have experienced a similar thing with my K-Bar Becker. It's got quite a nice swing to it and it will plow through these things like that. But the K-Bar Becker just does feel overall like a bit of a bigger knife in your hand and in your pack. And so the Top Silent Hero was very, very impressive as a powerful chopper. You see a plow through a stem here that took a few more swings and I did have to reset my grip position once there. But other than that, no hiccups in the grip, no hiccups in handle design, no hiccups whatsoever. This is cutting through gorse. A real common thing that we run into is small gorse stalks, um, sometimes coming off of old roots. And gorse is quite hardy and hard, but when there's small stems like this, they're not quite as bad. The main thing is you want it to go through that stalk before the thorns go through your glove. The Top Silent Hero worked really well for this sort of brush, this gorse management, which is a lot of what I do, as attested by this massive pile of gorse that I'm gonna to toss it into. <laughs> uh, here's some slow-mo footage just to demonstrate how great it was at going through green wood. It's a pretty sizable stock here. I'll cut out the audio so you can hear. So that's kind of fun. You can see that's a pretty clean cut on that little pine trunk. But overall, the Top Silent Hero was one of the most powerful, most well-designed blades that I have tested so far. And at the end of three hours of work, I really wanted to see if the edge was still on it, so I chopped some flax, and this is the result right there, <laughs> which I was quite pleased with, so I cut a bunch more of it because it was quite fun. Flax is a bit difficult to initiate a cut in because it's got these linen fibers. It's actually what linen fabric is made from. So you have to get just the right angle and still have quite a nice edge on your blade. Anyway, I will fade out the audio here and I will just let you enjoy some slow motion slicing and then we'll go into just some funny commentary that I caught from the day and then I'll do a wrap up. Did you hear what he just said? Yes, yes, yes. Watch this. This is like the gorse isn't even there. <laughs> Where'd it go? Where'd it go? It's just it's just gone. Yeah. It's just it's rare for a knife this size to be plowing through stuff that thick. Oh man, we are gonna get wet today. So much wet. But then again, you know, you need water to survive. Yeah, as I told Daniel last week, 70% of you is water, so. You gotta drink it. 
A final note I realized I should mention is that the tops finishes are often done with the patina. You can see right here the sort of plant juice and the acidity of it has sort of created a little bit of a mark on that. Now if you leave that on a tops knife I'm pretty sure that it will continue to react. So every time you use a knife that's got a patina coating you want to rinse and dry it really well. You can actually create homemade forced patina coatings. Most of you probably know that, but I'll probably make some videos about doing it later on. But just make sure you give it a real good rub down. If you want to do it even better, you can just coat it with oil. It doesn't have to be some really intense oil. It could just be olive oil. So that ought to wrap us up, guys, uh, in our review of this Topps Silent Hero. I think in summary, I love the handle of this. You can absolutely get good retention in your hand with a leather glove, which is really significant. As I referenced in the video, there's some things that if you're getting in and out of your sheath very often, then you will find that this sheath is not the most convenient. However, um, if you're doing some sort of outdoors pursuit where you're doing long periods of use for your knife and not necessarily accessing it all the time, I don't think that would be a big issue for you. I think things that I like about this Topps knife is the weight balance is superb. The chopping action is so good for a knife of this size. The handle is comfortable for chopping, but when you choke up on it, man, this feels like just a little bit bigger of a knife than like my Spyderco military. It feels that way in my hand. I know it's dumb to say that because my Spyderco military is, you know, probably right here. But the forward grip does give you a great feeling of control. So I'm really excited to test this in the kitchen test. So I'm going to actually test this and the SE at the same time. I think from here on out, I probably will only test knives in the combat kitchen test that have some criteria that make me think they might perform better than what I've already tested. So a thinner grind slope, thinner behind the edge, a different grind, something like that. I probably will test at least one of the stainless steel knives I do, either the cold steel SRK or the Falcon even that I'm having sent to me. But anyway, I'm really excited to test this in the kitchen because the forward grip feels so precise that I feel like some of the kitchen tasks are actually gonna feel nicer to do with this top silent hero. Overall, so far, I, I would say for the kind of work that I do on Wednesday mornings, this is probably my favorite knife overall with the K-Bar Becker right there close with it. However, this is a smaller size and because of the smaller size, it feels a little bit more nimble and quick. And so I think that I like this a little bit better. Obviously, it's not my knife, so I'm not going to keep it. And I'm happy because the K-Bar Becker has sort of like become my knife, you know. But I'm excited to test it out. I think for the chopping portion and actually slashing these weeds, these invasive species, I like the SE probably the least of the knives that I've tested. And this and the K-Bar Becker are probably about a tie. I think I like some of the technical aspects of a Topps knife, but I don't think for the amount of increased money you pay that they're that much functionally superior to a K-Bar. That said, I've always, always wanted to test one, always wanted to have one, and I've really enjoyed this model. Even though it's not really the model that I gravitate to most out of the Topps line, I think it's a very cool knife, very well built, very practical, very functional, just a real cool package in the Topps Silent Hero. So big thanks to Andrew for sending me this, and I look forward to testing more stuff. Stay tuned, guys. Bye.